I realize this might sound impossible, but what if I told you that scientists have actually developed batteries that can power certain devices for thousands of years without ever needing a charge? Together the challenges of conventional batteries and the problems derived from nuclear waste, a new technology called nano-diamond battery technology is being touted as an energy disruptive. But the root of this energy storage technology is known as beta voltaics, which is powered by beta decay and goes back to the 1950s. In 2024, researchers at the University of Bristol and the UK Atomic Energy Authority announced a proof-of-concept carbon-14 diamond battery that can provide extremely low power, drained at the microwatt level, for millennia. This technology is suitable for sensors and ultra-low power devices, though not yet for phones or electric vehicles. While the world has been focused on solar panels and wind turbines, a different kind of energy revolution has been quietly unfolding in laboratories across the globe. And it's not just about better batteries. In December 2022, researchers at Lawrence Livermore achieved something remarkable. They successfully ignited a fusion reaction where the fusion energy output exceeded the laser energy input to the target, though this doesn't include the total energy needed to power the entire laser system. Now, companies like Helion Energy have signed contracts to deliver fusion power by 2028, though these timelines depend on achieving specific technical milestones. Microsoft, one of the world's largest corporations, has bet on this technology. Meanwhile, China's East Reactor has sustained plasma temperatures of over 100 million degrees Celsius for over 17 minutes. Today, we're going to examine exactly what's driving this sudden shift who's leading this race, and why many experts believe we're closer to abundant clean energy than most people realize. Here's what's fascinating about the current energy landscape. According to the International Energy Agency's World Energy Investment Report, global investment in clean energy has reached approximately $3 trillion in recent years, with significant funding flowing to solar, photovoltaic and wind technologies. But while this massive shift toward renewable energy has captured headlines and government funding, something far more significant has been developing quietly in research facilities around the world. We're not just talking about incremental improvements to existing technology, we're looking at a fundamental breakthrough that could redefine what we consider possible in energy generation. Consider this, fusion energy has a power density that's literally millions of times greater than fossil fuels when compared by fuel mass. A single gram of deuterium-tritium fusion fuel could generate energy equivalent to burning approximately 10 tons of coal. And unlike solar panels that need vast areas of land, or wind turbines that depend on weather conditions, fusion reactors can operate continuously as baseload power, regardless of time of day or climate. The question is, why aren't more people paying attention to this? Perhaps it's because fusion has been the technology of tomorrow for so long that many have simply stopped believing it will ever arrive. But the data suggests we may be approaching a tipping point that most of the public, and even many investors, haven't fully recognized yet. What we're witnessing might very well be one of the largest energy revolutions in human history. And it's happening right now. Let's begin with something we're all intimately familiar with, the daily ritual of charging our devices. Every evening, most of us plug in our phones, tablets, and laptops. Our electric vehicles need to be connected to charging stations regularly. This has become such a normal part of our lives that we've built entire industries around managing battery anxiety. The lithium ion batteries that power most of our devices today represent decades of incremental improvements. They're certainly better than what we had 20 years ago, but fundamentally, they operate on the same principles. But while the tech industry has been focused on making these conventional batteries charge faster or last slightly longer, researchers in other fields have been working on something entirely different. Take the work being done at the University of Bristol in collaboration with the UK Atomic Energy Authority. 
In 2024, they announced they had successfully created a Carbon-14 diamond battery prototype. We had a device made out of diamond where we had the radioisotope integrated within that device and, and that's the... This isn't just a regular battery encased in diamond for marketing purposes. This represents fundamentally different technology. The process starts with Carbon-14, a radioactive isotope that's actually considered nuclear waste from graphite blocks used in nuclear reactors. Instead of storing this material as waste, the researchers encase it in synthetic diamond. As the Carbon-14 naturally decays, it releases electrons. The diamond structure acts both as a semiconductor that captures these electrons and converts them to electricity, and as a protective barrier that contains any radiation. The concept is striking. While your smartphone battery might give you a day or two of use, these diamond batteries can, in principle, maintain very low power output for thousands of years. That's because Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,700 years, though the practical usable lifetime depends entirely on the specific application and power requirements. There's also a California-based company called NDB that claims to have developed nano-diamond batteries that could potentially operate for up to 28,000 years. However, these claims have not yet been independently verified or published in peer-reviewed scientific literature. What makes this development particularly interesting from a sustainability standpoint is that it addresses two problems simultaneously. We get a long-term energy storage solution for ultra-low power applications, and we find a productive use for nuclear waste that would otherwise need to be stored for thousands of years anyway. It takes hundreds of thousands of years for radioactive waste to safely decay. And this underground tomb is the final resting place for Finland's spent... Now, these aren't going to replace the battery in your phone anytime soon. The power output is extremely low, suitable for sensors, medical implants, and other applications that need tiny amounts of power for very long periods but they represent a fundamental shift in how we think about energy storage for specific applications, from something that requires constant management to something that could operate autonomously for millennia. Now, let's examine what's happening in the United States, where the approach to fusion development has taken a distinctly different path Unlike the large government-led international collaborations we've seen historically, American fusion research is being driven primarily by private companies with significant venture capital backing. The most prominent example is Commonwealth Fusion Systems, a startup that emerged from MIT with a fundamentally different approach to tokamak design. So this is where Spark will actually get put together. You can actually see a life-sized decal of Spark on the wall. So that's one-to-one -one scale. You can see the toroidal field coils, the big magnets that'll be coming out of the magnet factory. You can see the vacuum vessel. You can see the cryostat. You can see how it'll all... In September 2021, CFS achieved something remarkable. They created a superconducting magnet that reached 20 Tesla, which is a world record for this type of large-scale magnet. Traditional fusion reactors have always been enormous because they needed massive magnetic fields to contain the plasma, and the magnets available simply weren't strong enough to do this in a compact design. CFS changed that equation. The company has raised approximately $3 billion in total funding as of 2025, with their Series B round alone bringing in $1.8 billion in 2021, which was unprecedented for the sector. CFS is currently constructing their demonstration reactor called Spark in Boston with their goal to achieve net energy gain by 2027. If successful, they plan to build their first commercial reactor called ARC with a capacity of about 400 megawatts in Virginia in the early 2030 seconds. Google has already signed a power purchase agreement for 200 megawatts from this facility it's a stark contrast to the traditional government-led consensus building approach we see. But CFS isn't the only player in this American fusion renaissance. There's also significant progress happening at the federal level, EE with international projects. In December 2022, researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory achieved what many consider the most important milestone in fusion history. Using their National Ignition Facility, 
they fired 2.05 megajoules of laser energy at a tiny pellet of fusion fuel and got back 3.15 megajoules of fusion energy. This was the first time in history that a fusion reaction produced more energy than was directly input into the target. Now, it's important to note that this doesn't include all the energy needed to power the lasers themselves, but it proves that the physics of energy-positive fusion reactions work in practice, not just in theory. We also have companies like Helion Energy in Washington, which has raised approximately $1 billion in committed funding, with milestone-based commitments up to $1.7 billion. They've taken a completely different approach with what they call magneto-inertial fusion. They've built six prototype reactors and are working on their seventh, called Polaris. What makes Helion particularly noteworthy is that they've signed a power purchase agreement with Microsoft to deliver 50 megawatts of electricity by 2028, though this timeline is contingent on achieving specific technical milestones. TAE Technologies in California has raised approximately $1.2 billion and is pursuing yet another approach using what's called a field-reversed configuration reactor. The diversity of approaches being funded represents a level of experimentation and innovation that we simply haven't seen in this field before. What we're witnessing in the United States is essentially the venture capital model being applied to fusion energy. Multiple companies, multiple approaches, significant funding, and aggressive timelines. It's a stark contrast to the traditional government-led, consensus-building approach we see with international projects. While the United States has embraced a venture capital-driven approach to fusion, China has taken a fundamentally different path, one that reflects their preference for large-scale, government-coordinated initiatives. The centerpiece of China's fusion program is their EAST reactor, officially called the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, located in Hefei. In 2025, this reactor achieved something quite remarkable, it sustained plasma at temperatures exceeding 120 million degrees Celsius for over 17 minutes. To put this in context, that's about six times hotter than the core of the sun, maintained continuously for longer than it takes to brew a cup of coffee. This represents a significant improvement over their previous record of 403 seconds in 2023, demonstrating that Chinese researchers have made substantial progress in solving one of fusion's core challenges maintaining stable, extremely hot plasma for extended periods. But East is just one part of a much larger strategy. China is also operating the HL2M reactor in the Southwest, which has been operational since 2020 and is often referred to in media as their newest artificial sun. They're also planning an even more ambitious project called CFET, the China Fusion Engineering Test Reactor. This will be their version of a large-scale demonstration reactor designed to bridge the gap between research and commercial power generation. What's particularly noteworthy is the approach China has taken. While American fusion companies are competing with each other for private investment, China has prioritized fusion research as a national strategic initiative. They're leveraging their participation in international projects like ETA to accelerate their domestic capabilities. Though, comprehensive public budget figures for their entire fusion program are not uniformly available. They're also building new facilities in Anhui province, specifically to advance fusion energy applications, treating this as what one might call a space race level technology competition. The strategic difference is quite clear. American companies are pursuing multiple competing approaches with aggressive timelines, betting that competition and private capital will drive faster innovation. China, on the other hand, is mobilizing their scientific workforce and state resources in a coordinated push, viewing fusion as a critical technology for national energy security. Both approaches have merit. The American model offers flexibility and rapid iteration, while the Chinese model provides sustained, large-scale investment and the ability to pursue long-term research without worrying about quarterly returns to investors. What we're witnessing is essentially two different philosophies being tested simultaneously, the entrepreneurial ecosystem versus the directed national program. The outcome of this competition may determine not just who achieves commercial fusion first, but what the global energy landscape looks like in the decades to come.
Now, here's where things become really interesting. What we're witnessing isn't actually a competition between different energy technologies, ET. It's the emergence of a complete energy ecosystem. Think about it this way. Nuclear diamond batteries and fusion reactors aren't trying to solve the same problem. They're complementary technologies that address different scales of energy needs. Nuclear batteries are perfect for ultra-low power devices, sensors, and specialized applications that need reliable power for decades without maintenance. Fusion, on the other hand, is designed for massive energy generation, powering cities, industrial facilities, and national electrical grids. Your medical implant or remote sensor could run on a nuclear battery for decades, while your home could get power from a fusion plant that produces no carbon emissions and uses fuel derived from seawater. To put this in historical perspective, when electric lighting was developed, it didn't just make candles and oil lamps slightly better, it eventually made them largely obsolete for most applications. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that solar panels and wind turbines will become obsolete. The International Energy Agency projects continued strong growth in renewable energy through the 2030 seconds, and these technologies have proven their value in the transition away from fossil fuels. The Energy Agency's new regional cooperation centre in Singapore is a pivotal step in deepening the IEA's partnership with Southeast Asia, one of the most dynamic regions in the global energy but if nuclear batteries and fusion energy achieve commercial viability at scale, it could create a scenario where we have truly abundant clean energy options across all scales of application. As we've seen today, we're living through what may be one of the most significant technological transitions in human history. The development of nuclear battery technology and fusion energy isn't just changing how we think about power, it's reshaping the fundamental assumptions we've held about energy for decades. These developments are happening rapidly, often in research facilities and corporate labs around the world, away from mainstream media coverage. The breakthrough at Lawrence Livermore, the record-setting achievements of China's East Reactor, the unprecedented private investment flowing into fusion startups, Gore God. These are the kinds of developments that tend to evolve quietly until they suddenly become unavoidable realities. If you found this analysis useful, and you're interested in staying informed about these technological shifts as they continue to unfold, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the channel. We focus on examining emerging technologies through a lens of rigorous research and objective analysis, rather than speculation or hype. The energy developments we've discussed today are just one example of how scientific and technological progress often occurs in ways that surprise us. By the time these changes become obvious to everyone, the most significant opportunities, whether for understanding, investment, or adaptation, have often already passed. Until next time, thank you for watching.